And the Brisbane Lions women's team will do an outstanding job representing this great football club. Would you please welcome the CEO of the team, Brianna Brock. She's fired up and ready to go to tell us where they're up to with the girls. Come on, Brianna. Hi, everyone. I, I hope you're having a, a good evening tonight. I'm, I'm certainly, yes, pumped up and excited. All three of um, or three of our, out of our four marquee players are playing tonight in um, the game, two with Melbourne and one on Western Bulldogs, and Emma Zilke, who's uh, actually away at the moment, so she's not playing. But um, all of our girls have kicked goals, and uh, three of the other Queenslanders playing are all playing strongly. So to give you an indication, probably about nine of the girls playing at that level will be in our side, which is really exciting. So um, it's a... a a huge year for us next year. So I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of an update um, of where we're at in building the list and in terms of where we are in, in terms of sponsorship and support. Um, but I firstly wanted to quickly genuinely thank um, the board and the club themselves for putting, uh, I suppose, um, their heart on their sleeve and applying for a women's licence. Not every AFL club did do that. And I think it's um, a really good indication of where the Brisbane Lions are heading in being really progressive and forward thinking and innovative and giving all the girls in Queensland an opportunity to come and play AFL football. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Many of you guys in the room might not know that, that in female football, Queensland's actually very, very strong. We've got the highest rate of participation in the country. We outstripped Victoria by about 20,000 participants. And in 2016, we'll see 85,000 Queensland girls have played AFL football this year. So that's a huge um, wave of participation that's coming our way. So congratulations to all the AFLQ staff in the room and all your hard work. Thank you, guys. So what does that sort of mean for us? That, that means we're really well resourced from a talent perspective um, in under 18s. Uh, female talent program, we actually compete in Division 1. Um, in the boys space, we comp compete in Division 2. And a couple of years ago, we were in the grand final against, <coughs> excuse me, against WA, and again competed really um, hard this year under the leadership of Craig Stasevic. And he also coaches our senior women's state sides as well, of which we've been very successful and competitive over the last two years. So again, what does that mean for our team and the Brisbane Lions? It means that our head coach is already coaching the best talent in Queensland and has been doing that for two years. So we know uh, where we're at with the girls that are coming through, but we've also co or he's also coaching the senior women's team. So when we start in November, we've already had two years of relationship building, of team culture and cohesion behind us. So not every other club is going to have that. So we think that's a really huge advantage and a great credit um, to Craig and the work that he's doing there. So um, we're, we're off to a good start. <clears throat> Our recruits, um, I think there's a little slide coming up. For those people who haven't seen it, we've got Taylor Harris, who's a 19-year-old from Queensland, grown up playing with some of the boys who are already in our team, and um, Liam Dawson, and played at the same club as Harris Andrews, and played against Ben Keyes as a young girl. Got Sabrina Fredericks Traub, who's made the huge step again as a 19 year old to move from WA and come and um, put her hat in the ring with the Lions and see how successful we can be. And she's the second tallest player in the league at 185. So we're not particularly at all in women's football anyway, but at least we've got one of the tallest. Um, the next one up there is Caitlin Ash. Oh, sorry, that's Emma Zilke. I haven't got my glasses on, sorry, I can't see the slide. Um, again, she's a dual best and fairest winner in the Queensland League. She's captained the state team for the, since 2014. She's won three premierships at Cooparoo Footy Club locally here. She's been working already at the Brisbane Lions for three years and um, she's just so pumped to be able to play for the club that she works for and loves. So, so it's great um, that she's in our side. And our last one is Caitlin Ashmore who's a Victorian from Ballarat, and uh, she's also just kicked a second goal in the game. And um, she's an elite runner, and she was also uh, training as an Olympian um, in javelin throwing. So it's a strange sport to come over and cross over to, but we're certainly glad to have her. And all four girls are a huge asset for us, and this, these four particularly make us super competitive. Outside of that, <clears throat> the draft just opened yesterday for the girls, so this is the first time women in Australia have been able to put their name down and potentially come and play AFL football. Our draft is a little bit different. Obviously, our wages are slightly different to the boys, and the, the, the top 
two girls will be earning about 25 grand, and the next four get 10,000, and the next um, batch only get 5,000. So there's not enough money in it at the moment for girls to move and come and be drafted to any club. So we're having a state-based draft, which means anybody who wants to play for Brisbane has to nominate for the Brisbane draft, and then from there we'll select who we want out of that team. So it's a tough selection process for us. We know probably of about 15 that we're really certain on, and then the rest um, is anyone's guess. So we will have a final tryout day or selection day on October the 2nd, um, and all those girls who are nominated and want to be serious about being picked will need to be at that day um, for final selection. Then the draft itself will be held on October 12th, and from there we'll have our team, which will be really exciting. Um, we will start training November 21, and we'll start playing games uh, last week of January or early February. Play every team once, two games, uh, two, two game final series, and um, hopefully next year I'll be standing here with a trophy, um, having won the first premiership of the, the Women's League. So, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's a huge honour um, for myself to be able to lead this and create this team and um, get these girls really believing in, in themselves but also believing in the club and being part of something that's so special. Even though we have had um, a tough year this year, we still have a great history. We have so many fantastic people at the club. And thank you to all those people um, who've supported me coming into this role and welcomed this idea and this initiative and their fully on board and supporting it and it's making it a really um, fun place to be and really exciting time for me personally to be involved in. So thank you to all those people at the club. Um, the last thing I wanted to finish off um, with was just to talk a little bit about um, how we see this group coming together. Um, got to understand the girls are still going to be working full time. Some of them will be students. Uh, some of them will be nurses on night shift, firewomen, um, all different walks of life that they'll come from. Our age range will be probably from 18 all the way up to 38. Um, so, you know, 20 years of um, experience through there. It's really important to us that um, the membership and the or members and the fans get behind us. I don't think the girls will have ever realised how much support there will be out there for them. And we will have some... Uh, foundation memberships coming through from our membership department, the great work that they're doing in there, that people can get behind us and become a foundation member with all the funds going straight into the girls' programs to make sure that we can run a really um, elite program. So keep, keep an eye out for all that stuff coming out. Uh, we are still uh, working really hard on sponsorship. We've been lucky um, to get a major sponsor who we, we will announce shortly, but we are still looking for people to partner with us and support us through this journey. and get on board, it's a historical thing, the game will never be the same again. Um, it's truly a revolution that's happening and we hope you can all be part of it and look forward to 2017. Thank you very much.